So that works. Okay. Hello and welcome back to Your Health Transformed. I am talking to Colleen today and she has all these different techniques in kettlebell training. And I'm really excited to talk to her about all these different techniques and then even how some of these can help you get over self-limiting beliefs. So I'm shocked to learn all the different things kettlebell training can do. And so I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to dive in. And so I am curious because there is so many different ways to exercise. And so being in weight loss, I like try to help my patients get motivated, obviously, probably, you know, to exercise in general. So I've talked to different types of people like yoga, Pilates. I'm curious, um, kettle, kettlebell, kettlebell, and why you chose specifically this arena of all the different types, you know, CrossFit, and you may do a little bit of everything, but I'm just curious, like, why focus on on that yeah so i did not pick the kettlebell kettlebells picked me it was a okay. really serendipitous experience um prior to kettlebells i was working in the fitness industry i taught cycling classes hit classes bar classes yoga classes i did everything under the sun but i had had no experience with the kettlebell and I remember one day I went into a job interview. I wanted to go into management instead of training. I was super burned out. I was teaching like 25 classes a week wow. and seeing people one-on-one. -on -one. And I was like, I, I cannot sustain this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if managing has a, a track for me. And I totally BS my way through this interview. Looking back now, I have no idea how I got hired for the job. But anyways, I got hired and I remember I was part of my job description. I, I taught like a few small group classes at this studio. And for somebody who's not within the kettlebell industry, this won't make it make much sense, but there's two really uh, prestigious certifications within hard style kettlebell technique. And that's the type of kettlebell technique that I practice hard style. It's where we lift something very, very heavy for very few reps. Okay. And we have these two certifications. One's called Strong First and one's called RKC. And all of the trainers at this gym have one or the other. And I have nothing. And I, I thought anybody could just like pick up the kettlebell and swing it which they can i mean right now if, if you're standing next to a kettlebell you've never touched it like you can definitely swing it but there's a proper technique right. very similarly to you know a going to a, a five-star restaurant you yeah. know if you were to have a five-star experience i guarantee if you're gonna you know get a a piece of meat there's a specific temperature they're gonna mm -hmm. turn the, the heat to they might use butter versus olive oil yeah. it's there's a certain amount of time that that meat is going to be on the pan before it gets flipped. There's all of these little details to keep in mind in order to have this incredible, you know, experience in your mouth. And it's the same thing with the kettlebell. Anybody can swing it, but to do it very well, there's a lot of devil. There's a lot of detail. Yeah. Devil in the detail. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm teaching this class and one of the trainers comes up to me afterwards and he was like, Colleen, I have I know that you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, and at first, oh my gosh, that felt really bad. I like, I, yeah. I couldn't believe he was calling me out. Um, but the next thing he said was, I would really like to help teach you. Will you yeah. let me do that? And I was super receptive and he started training me with the kettlebells. And my intention was literally just to know enough that I could teach a, a class safely and not have all of these trainers be like, why like why is she here yeah yeah and in the midst of that i started to gain this incredible confidence within myself um you know prior to kettlebells i was really unfamiliar with strength training and i started to notice that i was getting really really strong these yeah. skills that you know he made them look so beautiful and graceful and it was so clunky in my body in the beginning they eventually had this, you know, finesse to them. And I was like, wow, this looks very different now. Yeah. I remember this one day he was like, okay, Colleen, let's see you do a pull-up now. And at the time I was like, Brandon, I don't do pull-ups. Like I'm not strong yeah. enough to do something like that. And he was like, just try. 
So I hop up on the bar and I pull myself up for the first time ever. And that moment was one of the most magical moments. And I remember looking at him being like, dude, how, how did I do this? And yeah. he was like, kettlebell, you've been, you've been training your grip strength. You've been training your lat strength. Your core is significantly stronger now. Like yeah. you should be able to do these things. And it was in that moment that I started to realize like, I can do hard things. And I have, you know, been holding myself back by trying this new modality um, and not giving up. It allowed me to see something magical within myself that I hadn't seen yeah. prior. So yeah. that's why I stick with the kettlebells because wow. there's this lesson that comes up again and again and again as I work on new skills, as I increase the weight, as I you know, go after new challenges, there's always this lesson of so long as you don't stop, you are going to be rewarded in a really incredible way, a tangible way with the kettlebell. Mm -hmm. And it's that reward that then translates over to other areas of my life where, you know, I, I gain the confidence to invest in a business coach and create a six figure virtual kettlebell business. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't had that lesson again and again with the kettlebell that so long as you, you know, stay consistent, you put in the work, you show up, yeah. you know, big things will happen for you. So yeah. that's that's my love affair with with the kettlebell. Oh my gosh. That's great. That's such a great story because honestly I do a little bit of everything. I do. I, I don't even know if I'm doing the kettlebell right now, like since talking to you, like I may have to like tap in and, and take a look at some things, but I do have some kettlebells at home, some regular weights at home and do a kind of a different, different types of things. And so and that makes so much sense. And to be honest, I've never heard such quite a story like that. I think that's like awesome. And so, and that was, I was going to ask like, why, this one versus like CrossFit, because so many people are doing so many things, but you kind of answered in the sense that the strength that you've gotten from kettlebell, and it sounds like both physical and mental strength, you did not get that from cycling, CrossFit, and some of the other things that you've done. Is that correct? It's totally correct. And I think a, a big reason to that is, you know, I've tried all of these different modalities to to train with and i've it's never taken me so long to be able to achieve something i like with the kettlebell you really have you really have to work for it um yeah. not that the other things you don't have to work for i mean I, I remember it took me a really long time to be able to like hand balance it took me a really long time to be able to hit you know x amount of wattage on a indoor cycling bike but there's just something so technical about the kettlebell where you have to concentrate on your breath, your tension, your alignment, your timing, and being calm while doing all of it. It's it's unlike anything else I have personally experienced. Um, it's almost like this like meditative state. A lot of people will also compare it to like practicing a mixed martial art where it's just that it, there's so much artistry within it that interesting. there's just so much to explore when you're you're playing specifically with hard style kettlebell technique yeah, that's it's different than ask. just picking up a kettlebell because you yeah. know anybody can pick up a kettlebell and use it the same way they would a dumbbell but there's something there's something unique about when you dive in to the technique okay yeah that's what i was gonna ask dude so you answer the next question, like with kettlebells, do you, you know, it's, is it specific to hard style? And you said hard style is a much heavier weight. So can you give, maybe like elaborate on that? So for yeah. example, I have like 15s, you know what I'm saying? So when you start training somebody in this technique, what, what, I mean, I guess people are different weights, but what is the weights? Yeah, the yeah, weight absolutely. Yeah. So when, when I say we're lifting something um, very, very heavy, Heavy is relative, right? Yeah. Heavy for you is going to be different for me versus, yeah. you know, a man who is 145 pounds versus yeah. a man who's 210 pounds. Right. So it's relative. Um, however, when I'm training somebody in hard style technique, I use uh, the different weight classes that we use for test out standards uh, to be the bell sizes that people will use as they get started. Now, this might sound like very intimidating, 
-hmm. but my women, my women under 50 are going to start on the lightest side with 25 up to 35 pounds as like a light weight. As they start, that's as a start? start. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, and gentlemen are going to start with something between 45 to 55 pounds as their light bell getting started. Really? And that can sound really intimidating. However, the exercises that we're getting started with are exercises like deadlifting yeah. and farmer's carries where, you know, do you know how much your groceries weigh when you pick them up from yeah. the trunk and walk them inside the house? Do you know? I don't know. No, <laughs> I, I would love. I mean, this is like such a big ask, but the next time you go grocery shopping, even just like putting, you know, three or four of your bags on a scale and just seeing like how much this is way yeah. we are capable of lifting so much more weight than we give ourselves credit for. And, um, you know, the cool thing with kettlebells is most of the time the kettlebells are going to be listed in kilos versus pounds. And yeah. a conversation I have with a lot of my clients is like, oh, well, it's in kilos. I don't really know what that is in pounds. So like the, 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 it just, it doesn't translate the same way in their mind. Um, yeah. so they're able it's to less, push more. Yeah, yeah. They think like, oh, it's less. Yeah. Um, and that, that's kind of cool. But, um, well, and not to mention, you mentioned groceries, kids, right? Like, yeah. yeah, like kids, like I have a younger, my youngest is about to be not even in kindergarten pre-K and he, I'm still lifting him all the time. He's gotta be like 40 pounds. There you go. So dogs, like, dogs, like that's exactly. dogs, you know? So yeah, that makes exactly. sense. Yeah. So it, it sounds a lot more intimidating than it actually is. And I, I think something that's really unique with kettlebells, um, it's something where I always encourage people should really have a coach if they are looking to get into this type of training so that they don't get hurt. Um, because, you know, a lot of the exercises that you are going to be starting out with, um, it, it all starts with the deadlift. The deadlift turns into the hike back, which turns into the swing, which turns into the single yeah. swing, which eventually turns into the snatch. So it's important that you're working with somebody who can help guide you on the breath and the tension and the alignment when you start off with the deadlift so that you're not going to get hurt and you yeah, are exactly. the things that you should be feeling um, so that you can see progress as you are taking the time to train this way. Yeah, no, that's great. So then another question so yeah, that you you know that was a great point that you made because most, especially women, probably carry more than what they think they're mm -hmm. carrying, and so when they go, because even out, I'll be like, you need a weight train. Like when I do my body comp and I see, you know, they're losing, you know, they need to kind of bulk up on muscle, you know, muscle mass and lose more fat mass, and they're like, weight train, like it's the, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to get bulky, you know what I'm in. That's the first like thought a lot of women have, but it's not bulky you know we're women we're not gonna end up like Arnold Schwarzenegger ever you know what I'm saying like that's not kind of how we're made so what are some of the I'm curious some of the heavier weights so if their starting weight is 25 35 pounds what do they do you gradually like increase them I'm assuming and then yeah, yeah. is there like a end or you just keep going until they feel like you know like a max <laughs> I love that you ask, is there an end? I mean, I've been at hard style kettlebell technique going on six years now, and I would say I want to continue to be able to lift yeah, okay. more and more and more. Um, but like the majority of the clients that I start with, let's say somebody is going to learn how to, to swing their 25 pound kettlebell within eight weeks, they're now swinging 45 pounds. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, clients who continue a year, two years, three years. I mean, I have women who are swinging close to a hundred pounds. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the sky is really the limit. I was yeah. with, um, I was with a girl this past weekend and we were snatching kettlebells. We were snatching, um, a bell in each hand and I was snatching double 35. So 75 pounds I'm throwing up above wow. my head. Oh my God. She's throwing 90 pounds up above her head. Like yeah. you know, with smiles on our yeah. face. Yeah. Um, wow. So that's that is awesome. really the limit. I've seen, yeah. I've seen so many women do incredible things with these weights. And the, the thing that I find so interesting about hard style is 
and this is something that is spoken about a lot in our community is we look very unassumingly strong. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. It's very different than like going into like a bodybuilding type of a workout, the yeah. muscle, the way that the muscle is being trained is not in isolation. It's very global. So you're using okay. everything at the same time. So you don't necessarily like most people wouldn't think I'm as strong. Yeah, as exactly. Just looking. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's great. Yeah. Now I'm interested. <laughs> I always like to be challenged in an exercise, you know, in, in different exercises. So that's great. And so when you are working with a lot of these women, I, I, and you probably touched on this earlier when you kind of went through your own story, like you relate how you, are you seeing the same, almost like not only physical, but mental confidence and strength that you've seen in your own journey when you're working with other people during, yeah. during this hard style. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it's so easy to see it's so easy to see them getting stronger. It's very easy to see body composition changing, yeah. but to be able to see how this impacts, not just me, but all of the women that I work with from a mental and emotional standpoint is absolutely incredible. I have had clients who have, you know, gotten out of relationships, toxic relationships, huh. changed careers, moved across the really? country because they're starting to believe in themselves. And this, I mean, I think there's so many things out there that can help to empower someone, but to feel empowered from a workout, from a piece of iron, a piece of iron that like, you don't need a gym membership, yeah. just go over that kettlebell. Yeah. Like it's, it's such a small thing that has the potential to just create such, such a spark in somebody's life. Um, it's been a gift to be able to see that within myself, but especially within the community of women that I work with. And I've seen it again and again and again. I have a book called Kettlebell Catalyst and all of these women, not all of the women, because there's been more women to come into the community, but there's about 10 stories within that book of these women just sharing their experience as to how the kettlebell has positively impacted their life from that emotional, mental standpoint that I want every woman to read to realize that she is capable of so much more than she thinks yeah yeah and and i wonder and you may or may not know i remember you mentioned there was a psychologist that was like look what the kettlebell can do on this particular you know as far as like giving them more positive more confidence on emotional health why do you feel like specifically it's kettlebell versus uh, I don't know. And maybe some other ones, but I would say like, this is kind of, and I've talked to a lot of exercise types of people and it, this part is relatively new hearing it from mm -hmm. you is new for me. So why do you think it's this particular technique or the kettlebell, would you say in your opinion? Yeah. Um, I think this can also go hand in hand with barbell specifically with something like Olympic lifting. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason I think it's so um, evident in the kettlebell is you cannot afford to mess up. If you mess up, you have a really strong chance at getting hurt. Okay. So the psychologist that I work with, she, she made a correlation between a lot of the females that I work with and this type of training. We realized that there's a lot of people that I have worked with who have these very tra traumatic experiences that they have been working to overcome. And when it comes to kettlebells, your breath and your ability to be present in the body is extremely important. And a lot of times with people who are survivors of these traumatic experiences, they leave their body and they lose a lot of focus. And that's a big thing that she touches upon. She, yeah. she has a picture in, in my book. Um, when we're training with the kettlebells, everything is happening very, very fast. So we have two different types of exercises. We have slow grinds that happen slowly and we have ballistics. And these are exercises that are intentionally happening very, very fast. Okay. So in order to move very fast and keep your body safe, it all comes down to being aware of what am I feeling and being present with, with the breath. And because these women have had to learn how to do these exercises and they execute them extremely well, yeah, extremely well, they have been put in a position where 
they have to go back into their yeah, body. Yeah, correct. I can see that. I can see the correlation. And that yeah. that's how the healing, to yeah. my understanding, I mean, I'm not the one who wrote this. Yeah, chapter, correct. To my understanding, that's that's how it's worked. That makes sense. That's great. That makes a lot of sense because you're right. No, even I, you know, ACEs. So the medical term, we call it ACEs, which is, you know, um, essentially like trauma that people have had in childhood childhood mm -hmm. experiences and um people don't deal with those and so I've even written articles on how they manifest as medical conditions right they've mm -hmm. manifested as diabetes obesity depression like all these different things because it's like cooped up things that people put over here that they don't deal with right and so that makes a lot of sense in the in the sense that this particular movement because the movements can cause injury that you almost have to like zoom in focus you know, on your body, like focus on this thing, become more aware of like you and, you know, and all these things. And then in, in turn, it helps them to be able to deal with whatever that hurt was, you know, I think a little bit better. That's great. That makes so much sense. I think and that's one of the other reasons why it's like, you know, people get really nervous when it comes to you want me to use how much weight. Yeah. And like it brings that hyper focus, like, oh my gosh, I'm about to swing 45 pounds. Like, <laughs> Colleen is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can but see it, that. It like it brings this this energy, this focus that is it, it's it's magical. It's yeah. healing. It's yeah. it's powerful. Yeah, it sounds like it. That's great. No, I think that's great. So like, so have, since going into kettlebell, have you have you done any other do you, any other other exercises, or you feel like because this like you said, work so many different parts of the body. Like this is essentially like a whole body thing. Like it's, you know? Yeah. Um, I have outgrown some of my kettlebells for certain exercises where sure. I, I do have a squat rack. I do train with a barbell at this point, Yeah. Um, but the majority of things that I do, everything is around, it's around the kettlebell, the kettlebell. body weight, That's kettlebell awesome. and barbell. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. And then, um, how, like when somebody's just starting and they, you know, I know you said people can be concerned about that heavy weight. How long are these, like these exercises when you're training people and, and it, does it depend on them? Do they start off like maybe 10, 15 minutes and then they kind of build up or how does this work when you're training people? Mm. Well, typically when somebody comes to start working with me, they need to go through my 13 week intensive and those workouts, those last anywhere between 30 to about 75 minutes. Okay. However, somebody who is just looking to get started with hard style kettlebell technique, I think there, there's no max or minimum time that they need to be following. It really is going to come down to the individual. What's their history? What are they trying to do? How much can they handle? Um, I think 15 minutes is a, a a great starting point just to get comfortable with hip hinging, holding a plank and learning how to deadlift. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I learned so much from, from you, like just listening to you, you know, and so that you've been very enlightening about that. I'm even interested. Tell us where everybody can find your information, your book, and we'll definitely put it in the show notes. Thank you so much. Yes, you can find me online at www.colleenconlin.com. I spend a lot of time on Instagram. If you want to hang out with me there, my handle is I am Colleen Conlin. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll do. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me.